Good morning. I'm gonna do a little farm tour video uh, to share what's going on at the farm with all of you. Um, so I'm Terry. This is Brown Sugar Produce. We're in between Brandon and Rivers, Manitoba, and this is July 1st, 2022. Um, I'm just in the greenhouse here, so I'll show you what we've got left in here. Um, not much. Got some green onions I need to plant. These are just tomatoes that were left over that didn't get planted. Mostly we just have backup leftovers in case something dies. Um, and some lettuce. These will be probably planted out in a couple weeks or so. Oh, Harper came to say hi. And we um, picked up some eggplant transplants from our neighbors at Walker's Greenhouse that look much bigger than ours. So, And I've got some herbs to go out here also from Walker's Greenhouse. Um, yeah, mostly just our lettuce successions. So um, one thing we do on the farm is plant lettuce every week because we harvest lettuce every week. So now I am just walking towards uh, the field. Here's my child doing some sort of dangerous acrobatics on the trailer. <laughs> There's John. Hello. John's putting the row cover back on the kale and broccoli because I hate putting row cover on. And I um, replanted it for the third time yesterday. So we've had a rough um, weather this spring and the cutworms were munching on our kale and it was too wet and it was just generally unhappy so um he's still got it open here so you can see i have it this way it's annoying um you can see this one survived the second planting and some of these did um something like this um is i just planted that yesterday so that's a new transplant um and then we've got this one's name is survivor because this one survived the first planting so had all of our kale made it we would have kale like this right now all the way along the road but we do not so so yeah and i wish i could turn this video around so i don't have to hold it this way but i don't know how to do that so Bear with me. Not good at tech and don't care. Um, <laughs> we've got some baby dill growing here. If I can see what I'm doing, which I can't. Um, this is a row of peas. Bye. You have to be on this side, Myra. Hi. This is Myra. Myra planted these peas. How many peas did you put in each hole, Myra? Lots. A handful, right? Yep. What's in your hand? Happy Canada Day. So our peas are flowering, which is exciting. Um, we've got lots of blooms on them now. So um, that means that we will probably be picking peas next week. So that's exciting. Exciting if you like picking peas, which I do not, but that's fine. <laughs> I'm excited like the first time I pick peas and then no times after that. Uh, so that's peas. Oh, we can go in the greenhouse here too. So in here, um, we just have some spring crops that are just finishing up. So these are Hakurai turnips. So we need to get in there and some of those need to be harvested probably. And we've got arugula, which did okay this year. There's not much flea beetle this year, which is nice. Um, and then actually he's got three rows of melons in here. You can see one, two, and then there's one in between these crops because we're gonna be taking each of these crops out and then the middle row of melons. These are the French Charente melons that John covets <laughs> and we're hoping it'll be a good year for melons we did grow a lot of melons this year uh, watermelon too because it's a wet year so last year was a dry year and not 
We, I don't, did we even, I don't even know if we grew melons last year, but anyway, we didn't harvest any, so. Um, we just passed, um, if I could see, which I can't. Um, these are green onions that are going in our CSA bags this week. And then past it is leeks and it's kind of weedy. You can't really see, but that's also leeks all the way. So we planted leeks in this field so we can pay closer attention to them this year. So we are trying to do that. Um, and they need to be hilled. So we're going to do that so that you hill them, put dirt on either side of them so that you get bigger white parts because that's the best part of the leek or the part that you eat. Um, so under the white row cover there, we have rad radish crop we harvested and just put the row cover back on. There's a few left. Um, daikon and watermelon radish at the very end of it, which kind of got drowned. I don't know if it's going to come along or not, but I weeded it anyway. Um, and then we've got, we just flipped these beds over. These beds were all lettuce and then he tilled it in. We, f we harvested it all, tilled it in, um, and then I replanted three rows of lettuce here this week so so those are growing along our chard is looking good finally and under this row we have another row of broccoli so we increased our broccoli by double this year um, we grew it last year um, broccoli is like one of our number one requested crops um, it's something that we hadn't really tried growing because uh, we know like you have to grow it under row cover which is pretty big hassle because you have to take the row cover off anytime you have to do something with it but um it actually was really good last year like the harvest was sufficient that it was worth taking the row cover off so um you know if you get under there and you harvest like three bags of broccoli it's not worth it but we were harvesting you know a good I don't remember like 10 pounds every time we went in there or something so so it was uh, worth it and it's it grew really well for us so um, we're hoping we can get it into CSA members bags and into our online store lots and all that um, we've got uh, two rows of cucumbers uh, three different kinds um, and those are from transplants because of cutworms. We have, a, we seem to have pretty heavy cutworm pressure in this field still, um, depending on the year. And uh, yeah, so they, we just seem to do better with transplants. And this year we are really glad we had transplants because it, they had to sit in the greenhouse a lot longer. So typically like we'd see cucumbers vining out by now, but this is not a typical year. So. Um, this is a whole row of watermelon. I don't really know why, but <laughs> hopefully they grow well. And two rows of peppers. And two rows of eggplant. Now we're heading out into the tunnel field here. So our caterpillar tunnel is out here. Um, there's two fields on the other side of it. Um, so there's like kind of a, this is a grassy patch for driving on. And then these, this, well, it doesn't look like a field, like it looks like a pasture. It's not, it doesn't look like a vegetable field. Um, because this is still so wet that anytime John tries to come in here and do something like he's like, oh, maybe I can get in now. I'll show you what happens. His wheel goes into the field and it goes sinks up to the axle pretty well so um this is like still just the wettest area one of the wettest areas uh on the farm um so we've really been struggling because these are usually our lettuce fields and we've had to put all of our lettuce in um in the rest of the field so um so yeah it's been a bit of a a different year and it's challenging but it's kind of interesting too because you know, we have, we set our plans and like, it never goes according to plan, but, um, this year it went really far off plan to the point that we had to kind of make new plans mid season, um, and, you know, cut some things and decide what we're going to, you know, how we're going to adapt. So whatever it's, you know, adapting is just a practice. You have to keep practicing it. So <laughs> it's, it's not the worst thing to be having a bit of a different year. We can practice adapting. Um, these are peppers that are finally starting to do something and tomatoes that look fantastic 
I was talking to somebody yesterday, a gardener, who was bragging about, you know, how she plants her four tomato plants. <laughs> and I was like, first of all, you're buying tomatoes from me. So if you're so good at growing tomatoes, um, but anyway, <laughs> um, no, the, uh, the reality is like for us, smaller transplants work better um, because we have about 400 plants and tomatoes can be big wimps if they're really big transplants. It makes it more challenging. So um, we kind of stage ours. We were lucky this year to get them staged right because it was a really year weird year and they sat in the trays a lot longer than usual. But um, this way they get good root establishment and good kind of good and seeded in well and a good start. So um, we're really happy. Normally they would be a lot bigger, but um, plants know, they know more about the season than we do. Um, so we find that if things are, you know, if it's delayed, like if it's a, they have a shorter window to grow in, they just hurry the F up and do it. <laughs> so they, they know. And I've seen that with all the flowers and the wildflowers and things. Things are like a week behind if that like my peony is blooming um as of three days ago and that's pretty typical so so but it, it has been a lot cooler than than normal um this is something we're excited about so we have more lettuce out here this is like we had to make an extra row that we usually don't plant in just to because we didn't have enough space for planting um this is the former bed of this week's csa radishes so something we're finding this year that we love um, as we've switched to my dream of being an only in a farm that only supplies CSA members. Um, so that means we have 100 families and we grow for those families every week for the whole season. And that's what we do. Um, that's always been something I, want, I was moving towards and we were able to go for it this season. And the way that we can flow now is amazing. Um, so typically when radishes are ready, like you need to get them out. If it rains, they will all split. Um, and in the past we would see, oh, these radishes need to be harvested today. And today would be market harvest day and there'd be no way that we could spend two hours harvesting radishes. So um, we would lose crops sometimes, like just because, you know, you grow it, do all that work, you get it to fruition and then you don't have time to harvest it. Um, we also had to have a lot more childcare last year, which was a burden. Um, so we're finding it's more fun yeah. this year, isn't it, Myra? Is it more fun? Yeah. We have more time on the farm together. Yeah. <laughs> what is this here, Myra? What crop is this? Radishes. That's not radishes. No. What does it look like? Lettuce. Yeah, that's lettuce. So that is romaine lettuce, which is not something we always grow but we're growing some this year because of course everybody loves romaine lettuce um so those are looking really good i will list some this week in the store but it would benefit from another week of forming heads i would say and this is our beautiful butter lettuce which is going in in our bags this week here's some not in a cage that mama deer hasn't found thank goodness so yeah so we've got a nice planting of lettuce there ready um there's 215 heads there so it's more than we need um and then in this next row oh and the cages are for deer um we actually have a mama deer living on the farm this year and we see her regularly and she leaves our lettuce alone and we're kind of nice to her but she needs to not eat my stuff and i'll continue being nice um <laughs> We've got celeriac and then celery at the end. Um, this is looking better than it did last year, so that's good. Um, last year was a bit rough, but that was whatever. We adjusted and it's better. Um, this is down here some uh, parsley that's starting to root in. And this is last year's tomatoes which fortunately are really easy to, they're one of the easier weeds to dispatch, but um, I had to, this entire row of lettuce here was very weedy. So I had to weed that. Typically I try not to weed lettuce. Um, it grows in the field for four weeks, which it's put out as a transplant. So it can typically outgrow the weeds, 
but not when you have last year's tomatoes in that row. So, um, so yeah, we had to had to weed one of them, which is fine. Um, yeah, this is lettuce everywhere. So lettuce is doing well this year, which is that's good because some things have struggled. Um, these are the outdoor tomatoes. We grow them under like with the plastic mulch to keep the weeds down because we can't weed everything and that it helps keep the moisture in the beds too so not that that's an issue this year but it is some years so we're really happy with how these are looking and we just put these posts in last week and we didn't fight so that was good <laughs> i've never john and i have never done that before janelle's always been around and we've always like when we're deciding who's going to do what together we're like yeah janelle and john can do the posts together because that will probably be less arguing but no i just assisted and did as i was told and it was good um this is fennel so they're very small yet um it was very unhappy when it went out it was in the trays too long and uh didn't look very good but it looks great now so that's the beauty of getting it out and getting things out in the soil and they root in and they get what they need and we it's really hard when uh, things are in trays for too long because they they really suffer and they don't look good. So it's really nice to get all this stuff planted. So so yeah, this is this is this field. So we've just come down the driveway on the cart and headed out to the main field. We meaning me and Harper. Um, I couldn't find Myra and I can hear her screaming now, so I guess I was supposed to, but anyway. That is not her, that's Spookland Ghost Lore, our scarecrow, um, who, I don't know if he was effective or not. We just have a deer living on the farm now, but. <laughs> uh, so this is our first planting of beets. These are going in as baby beets in this week's CSA shares. So CSA is Community Supported Agriculture. It's how we distribute our stuff. Um, that means that we have a set group of 100 families that take come and pick up veggies every week. And uh, yeah, it's a really nice way to connect the grower to the eater. And we really love it. We get to know people that way and get to know their families. So um, yeah, beets, beets, more beets. This is old spinach that just needs to be tilled in. It's good to let it go to seed a whole bunch before you till it in, because then you have weed problems too. Um, <laughs> it's not ideal, but it's what it is. Uh, and again, what it is here, like you can see these weeds, this grass, these grassy paths are actually just weeds that John mowed. And they, it's kind of nice. It's holding the soil in place, so it works. Um, there's a lot of pride and ego in market gardening about weeding. So it's, we're not immune to it, but we try to try to be reasonable. Um, this is our garlic. We decreased the amount of garlic we're planting this year just because of space, because it's difficult to always rotate it. You can't plant it in the same place for like seven years. And yeah, we start to run out of space for those, for alliums, onion crop. Oh, there comes Myra. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, this kind of works. You can see my shadow, but not my face. Um, here are carrots and a five-year-old who wants us to hear her. And more carrots and more carrots. And this is just weeds that got mowed. And I'm working on weeding the asparagus, but I'm not done yet. And midway through, we found a little sparrow nest with six eggs in it. So I'm going to not weed that spot. I'm always doing that. It drives John crazy. Um, there's the black, the, that part is weeds. That's just a pathway that like a headland for us to turn around and drive on. Um, and because those trees suck all the moisture, so we don't plant too close to them. Um, but it's nice to have them for the wind suppression. Um, so the black stuff, black earth is potatoes that just got planted really late, just last week or so. And then all the rest of our potatoes are here waiting to for their first tilling. They have had their first weeding 
even though it doesn't really look like it. Um, we have a lot of millet in this field, so millet's a tough one. And this is beans that are in need of weeding. And more beans. Beans that I weeded a little bit, or somebody weeded a little bit. Um, this is a funny thing. So our first planting of beans, we actually ended up giving up on because they were just slow. They're slow and slow and just like yellow and not happy and being eaten by grasshoppers. So I said, just like that, that row came up terribly, just go through that row and do another planting. So John just like literally ran down the row, um, with another, uh, yeah, here's a good spot where you can see with another row of seeds. And you can see like these ones have been up for a month and are just kind of sitting there. And these ones have been up for a week and are pretty well outpacing the uh, first ones. So not planting things at the right time can have a big impact. So if the soil was just too cool, I guess, and too wet. Um, this I am trying to make the call whether to give up on or not. And I decided I'm giving up on it just looking at it right now. <laughs> it's uh, gold beets, so they don't germinate very well. And um, that is not worth my time when there's other things that need to be weeded. And I like gold beets, but they're not not worth my time in there. So, But these ones, however, I've been keeping up on. And so this is our second planting of beets. And again, this is our second planting of beets. This is our first planting of beets they're not all that different. So that first planting has been seeded since the end of April and is um, just very slow because it's been very cool and wet and just not happy. So we have moved, we were over there. Now we're over here. Harper's still here. Um, so we are in section three, which has all of our onions which are looking good. You need a little bit of weeding attention in here, but not too bad. Um, carrots, this is our second plantings of carrots, which are looking good. Onions, onions that were weeded yesterday and more. <laughs> it's very exciting. I love weeding onions, uh, but there's a lot. I have seven rows of them this year, so I'm a little bit less enthusiastic sometimes. Uh, so yeah, that's all onions, shallots, I guess that just that. And then these are, this is where all of our cabbages are. So we have our storage cabbage under here, four rows. And then we have six rows here of our summer cabbage, um, some of our red cabbage, and this is Napa cabbage. Um, I don't... I'm not super stoked with how it's doing, but I'll have a peek. See, the grasshoppers are getting into it. And everybody was saying that the grasshoppers would die because it's wet, but they didn't. So that that's pretty bad defoliation. I don't have high hopes for our Napa being very nice this year, but something else will be because that's how it goes. Our strength and resilience is our diversity on this farm and as humans. So we are beside the water tank, which despite how wet it's been, we still use because we need to get things germinated or sometimes things need more water than, you know, it hasn't rained in over well over a week now. So um, sometimes things need some help like these squash transplants that we were so so fortunate to get from our neighbors because we are somewhat unhappy with how our squash germinated so what happened this should have this should be like a month ago a month ago we should have squash this size but um due to the conditions and the it was so wet we weren't able to get out here and get it planted until the day before we got five inches of rain um, and then it's been really cool since then. So um, it has just been suffering away um, and didn't germinate very well. And we were panicking a bit. And then I was like, don't panic. Just go to Walker's greenhouse and get their transplants that were left over at the end of the season. So 
Um, this is a bit of a job. We just planted these yesterday, so they are getting lots of attention. Um, we don't do squash from transplants for a reason because it's very um, susceptible to stress at when you transplant such big transplants like that. Um, and they tend to just be stunted and not really do well. So I imagine all of the squash will come in the end and be fine because squash, like all the other plants, it just knows and it hurries up if it needs to. But um, it's, it's had a challenging start this year. So lots of love to the little baby squash plants. I was looking for a nice place to end the video and I drove past this and went screech. So this nice little wild rose in the background and all these mosquitoes. Oh my goodness. The bugs are so bad. <laughs> I've given up any, like I just spray the bug spray on myself. I don't care. Like <laughs> I can't handle it anymore. Um, yeah, I, they're bad. Thanks for watching and I should do a much shorter one next time because I can't believe anybody would watch a half hour of me rambling and wandering around the farm. But thank you if you did. Have a good day.